With less moderate to severe eczema, why hide your skin if you can help heal your skin from within? Hide my skin? Not me. Dupixit helps keep you one step ahead of eczema with clearer skin and less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixin. Anthony Mackie revealed this little fun fact about his fellow Avenger Don Cheadle after making this Grammy confession. I would like to be nominated for a Grammy one day. Which? Well, Don Cheadle just won, so listen, Avengers can See, win. Don Cheadle don't count. That's Don Cheadle. <laughs> Man, you know what I mean? My first job, I was Don Cheadle's understudy off Broadway at the Public Theater. No way. Don, Don Cheadle's the reason I started acting. And apparently, we're the reason that <laughs> happening now. Well, some are sad about the parade route change for Battle of Flowers and Flambeau. There's a vibrant community on Main Street that hopes to make it a new tradition. Good afternoon, I'm Alicia Barrera, and I'll have that story coming up. Take so many photos on your phone that you don't have any storage space anymore. Coming up, some easy ways to declutter your phone. Are you ready to River Parade? Oh yeah, we are, and we're gonna be live down at the Arneson prepping for the River Parade, and I'll have an update on the storm potential for tonight and a cold front later this week. News at five starts right now. Welcome to the first parade of Fiesta. The River Parade, but first we're going to go to a local family unable to return to their home after it was damaged by fire this afternoon. The fire officials say they were able to put the fire out in 25 minutes. However, the home still sustained an estimated $225,000 worth of damages. A neighbor called for help after seeing flames coming from the home just before noon on Goya Drive. That's near Gibbs Sprawl and Walsham Roads. Fire officials say the flames made it from the back of the house all the way to the attic. No one home at the time of the fire. The Red Cross is assisting that family. A four year old animal cruelty case involving 70 sick and starving dogs ending finally with a sentence of 10 years probation. But the woman convicted will also never be allowed to have animals again. Glory uh, Penshore. Glory Pinchhorn, rather, the property owner, is facing a 10-year probationary sentence. She pled no contest to felony animal cruelty. Aside from not being allowed to own animals anymore, she was ordered to pay $667 in restitution. The 70 dogs seized on her property were found starved, covered in fleas, with mange and hair loss. We are learning about the passing of the managing editor of the San Antonio Observer newspaper, Doug Heath. He's been a face seen on our air several times in the past and a man I've had the privilege of getting to know over the years. According to family, he passed away last Wednesday. He was 64. Heath has worked at the newspaper since 2018, but before that he had a 28 year career at AT&T and Ameritech. He even worked the 2008 Barack Obama presidential campaign. A first viewing is scheduled for this Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Calvary Baptist Church. For more information, head to KSAT.com. At the beginning of the pandemic, COVID-19 treatments and medications were scarce. And even though that's changed, information overload is keeping people from accessing that medicine today. Tonight at 6, we're going to go over two newly approved medications, one that helps prevent COVID in people who are immunocompromised compromised and can't get the vaccine. The other is for people infected with COVID who are at high risk of a severe infection. Clearly there's more that we need to do to advertise that we have this available. As a specialist, we have to then communicate out. Tonight at six, how local specialists are using these drugs and the efforts that they're making to spread awareness. Ah, we're less than two hours away from the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. As always, we're going to be showing that parade live right here on KSAT 12. Tonight's hosts are David Sears and Myra Arthur, who are actually along the river right now, getting ready for the show to start and what a show it should be. Yes, and it looks like weather might be holding off. That is the big hope, Stephen Ursula. We are back here at the Artisan River Theater, the 77th annual Texas Cavaliers River Parade, the first big parade of Fiesta. And you know, this is an old tradition, right? This is something mm -hmm. that happens every year. 
but this one's going to be different. It's going to look different. It's going to feel different. It's even going to sound different. It's going to sound different. And we haven't really started Fiesta just I mean, I know there's some events have happened at Fiesta Fiesta, King's Cup, or Now it's officially started. That's Fiesta. One of many to come in the night. Start. Yeah, well, you mentioned a different look for Fiesta this year, a different look for the River Parade. The barges, they brought in a different company to kind of help boost up the barge presentation. And so you're going to see some 3D barges. You're going to see some different lighting down on the stage, down in the river that's actually in the river. So it's going to be a different kind of look, different kind of feel, but it's going to be the same Texas Cavaliers River Parade, the same party, party with a purpose, and the same raising money for children's charities all around this city. So the look is going to be a different, the feel might be a little different because it's not real hot, but <laughs> It's Thank goodness it is not June like it was last year when we did this. Our Grand Marshal this year, Randy Rogers, Texas country guy that we all know and love. You're going to hear from him. He's actually going to perform here this evening. So the crowd's starting to get in. We got the Cavaliers setting everything up. So come along with us. Make sure you tune in. The fun starts at 7 o'clock. We're going to have all the floats, all the festivities, a lot more confetti, especially from this guy. But we know that, do what we do. hey, let's hope it just doesn't get wet, right? We don't want any rain. We got Adam Kasky standing by. Down there. He is tracking all of the weather this evening for us to give us the very latest. Let's go to Adam on the stage. Yeah, we're live here on the stage where there's a little bit of a redesign and you're going to notice some changes this year. One important change is we're going to have MCs, you know, MCing the, the parade throughout the whole extent of it. So we'll talk more about that in a bit, but I do want to point out we have plenty of clouds overhead. Kind of looks like it could rain at any moment, but for the time being, it really looks like odds are in our favor to get this parade off without a weather hitch. All right, we could still see some storms, especially out west. We'll take a look at everything, give you the latest future cast and our latest thoughts on what we're uh, really thinking for the storm chances, where and when, tonight, all the way into early tomorrow morning in just a bit. Otherwise, you, know, you can't really complain compared to last June, last time we did this. We're right around 80 degrees. Weather watchers are coming in near 80 degrees and not too bad, especially with the clouds, a little bit of natural shade. I'm not going to complain. We'll talk about the storm timing, where and when coming up in just a bit. May the odds stay with you. Thank you, Adam. Also happening downtown preps for Fiesta's two other major parades. Battle of Flowers in Flambeau continuing on. While this year's route has disrupted a tradition, new memories are going to be made. Business owners and employees on Main Street are telling our Alicia Barrera they are so excited for something new. The ongoing construction along Broadway has detoured the 2022 route for Battle of Flowers and Flambeau Parade. Now, Main Street sets the stage for the kickoff to big crowds and new Fiesta traditions. The route will veer off onto Lexington, turn left on St. Mary Street, then head right on Brooklyn, right on Avenue E, a quick right onto Houston Street, and then a sharp left to Alamo Plaza. When they first approached and told us about it, we were all, okay, let's figure out how we're gonna do this. And months into planning, we're excited and a week into it and we're ready to go. Liz Villegas manages several of the LGBTQ businesses on Main Street, which is home to San Antonio's Pride Parade. This will be uh, Pride on steroids is how I see it. And it's exciting because we get to embrace our color and invite more people to our community and let them see a different side of us. On Friday, there will be a family-friendly festival that includes drag queen performances, but they'll also also have several bar areas set up for those that buy a ticket to sit in the bleachers. I'm sure everything uh, will, will just work out, you know, just like they've been going down to the market for so many years. But days away from the big weekend, some businesses say they still need help. A lot more staff, a lot of volunteers. In fact, we're teaming up with the American Legion to volunteer. According to the Fiesta San Antonio Commission, it hasn't been confirmed by the city if this route will be permanent, but some things are staying the same. For example, approved vendors, those will be set up along the route, as well as nonprofits selling street seating to raise money for their organizations. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And once again, we have tonight's parade live on air and online. The same goes for the other upcoming parades. While we'll plenty of Fiesta events happening for a full list, just scan this QR code on your screen or head to ksat.com. And by the way, because we're going to be airing the River Parade tonight, there will be some programming changes. American Idol will actually air overnight tonight at 2 a.m. 
So set that recorder, the DVR, and the Good Doctor will air overnight Friday into Saturday at 2 a.m. Just one day after the shooting that killed six and injured a dozen others in downtown Sacramento, police are announcing believed to be involved. The barrage of gunshots going off on Sunday. It happened in a crowd of people near a popular leading them to believe there were multiple shooters. In a statement overnight, President Biden demanding more and ghost guns by requiring background checks for all gun sales. Jury committee over Supreme Court nominee Katanji Brown Jackson. Democrats have the votes in the would be bipartisan. But before that can happen, Judge Jackson must first At which point Majority Leader Chuck Schumer would step in and bring the vote straight. Until they don't, what you can do now to maximize that space so you never have to. Authority camera and you can see traffic moving along pretty good, but we will warn you. This scene may change dramatically with all the traffic coming in. And we're, what, less than two hours yes. away from parade time.
New at five, decluttering your phone. It's annoying when it happens. You go to take a great photo because you just get an alert on your phone that your storage is full, so you can't. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It's on some quick and easy ways to clear out the excess stuff so you and your phone can get back to business. Marissa Malvetti loves taking pictures of her kids, but they started filling up her phone. I bought a phone with 256 gigs of storage because I was constantly running into this issue where I max out my phone storage and couldn't use the phone anymore. Sound familiar? There are easy ways to free up storage without sacrificing data. The first thing you need to do is look into your phone and see what's actually taking up so much space. For Androids, go to Settings, Battery and Device Care, Storage. For iPhones, it's Settings, General, iPhone Storage. If photos are hogging space, you can offload photos and videos to cloud-based storage, such as iCloud or Google Photos, or move them to a computer or external hard drive. You can also optimize photos. That means full resolution pics are stored on the cloud, while smaller versions remain on your phone. If music is what you're hoarding, think streaming instead. Same for podcasts. For some people, the issue is apps. All of a sudden, I'm running out of space, and it's because I have these old apps that I don't even use anymore. You can delete old apps or just offload them. That way you get rid of them, but can download again and pick up where you left off. And don't forget your text messages. All of those videos and photos and GIFs you share, they take up a lot of space. iPhone users like Marissa can clear out the big text attachments on the storage screen and have more space for more kid pics. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. In just 30 days, more than 8,000 potholes could be repaired throughout the city. At least that's the goal for this year's Pothole Blitz. This is the sixth year for the event. It's put on by the Public Works Department, which arranged for 16 pothole patrol crews to work extended hours doing this, repairing those potholes. And get this, you can help. City officials are urging people to call 311 that's a hotline number to report any potholes that they see. You can always submit online as well. And for that link, head over to KSAT.com. The annual tradition of the hanging of rock. They do it every year. The organizers of NIOSA did it earlier today. The tradition started in the 70s as a good luck symbol for great weather during the four night festival. Night in Old San Antonio kicks off tomorrow night. It goes through Friday night. The event has generated an average profit of more than $1.6 million to fund the Conservation Society of San Antonio's preservation of historic properties, as well as education and advocacy programs. And the rain rock may have its work cut out for tonight because it has been gray. It has been overcast. And, you know, we kind of need the rain. I was hoping for some. It's it's just so dry out there, Sarah. Adam, Adam. is actually live out there right now. Yeah, we are live at the Arneson. We are prepping for the Texas Cavaliers River Parade and talking to some of the Cavaliers out here. They're just happy to be back. I mean, yeah, we were here last June when it was sticky and sweaty. A bunch of them were saying, yeah, I went through three outfit changes <laughs> that night. Very different this go around, but we do have that thunderstorm threat. So let's take a look at what we're expecting this evening, starting with current temperatures so you can prepare if you're heading out. Right now, not bad, 81 degrees in San Antonio at the International Airport. You get to Stinson, 87. Go up to Comfort, it's 77, a little extra cloud cover Cover, giving uh, even more shade to parts of the hill country, so temperatures in the 70s. It is humid, you notice the humidity, but temperatures will be comfortable this evening. Take a look at it. About 80 degrees, you know, give or take a degree or so down here on the Riverwalk at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock dropping down into the upper 70s, and most of the parade will be spent in the mid and upper 70s. And you look at those storm chances, those percentages, about 20%. So. It's not a 0% chance of a storm, but you see where our confidence lies of a thunderstorm actually hitting the Riverwalk and the River Parade this evening during the parade time span. 
let's get to the latest, the current situation and what's causing all this, what's happening. This is the big picture. We've got a system that's moving into Texas right now and it's already triggering some activity in North Texas. As usual, we're gonna be on kind of the tail end of this activity. It's got a dry line, a cold front, all of it's headed our way and it's stirring things up out there. Already a severe thunderstorm watch box just west of Dallas and northwest of Waco, you see that. But let's go to our future cast. This is one of the computer models that we typically typically trust more in this situation. And you see how it flares up these storms out west of San Antonio. That's where we're already, that's where we're expecting most of the action this evening out west because we're already seeing some development in Mexico. That activity is likely to cross the Rio Grande, make it into some of our western counties closer to the Rio Grande. We're talking far west of Highway 281. And then odds actually favor them fizzling out before they'd make it to San Antonio. So some parts of Texas are probably going to see some good rain west of San Antonio, but where those storms flare up, watch out. They could have some high winds become severe and maybe even some large hail. So that's what we're watching closely just for the immediate evening. Our odds here in San Antonio are more so in the pre-dawn hours. We're talking 3 to 6 a.m. tomorrow morning for a quick splash of a leftover shower or storm. And then we get in into Tuesday, most of the day, just sunny and dry, very dry air moving in. You look at the severe weather risk, we're in the isolated category. So that means, you know, a few probably popping up here and there, but especially west of San Antonio, up in North Texas, Northeast Texas, Northern Louisiana, that's where really the bullseye is going to be for the most widespread severe weather. I mean, we're already getting severe thunderstorms in North Texas. So let's talk temperatures tomorrow morning. Again, a quick splash of rain possible before sunrise. We'll be in the mid 60s by the afternoon. A warm westerly wind, a dry wind. I mean, we're going to get into the mid 90s, record breaking territory. Dew points are going to plummet, so get ready for that. Dry air, higher fire danger over the next few days, especially as we get into Wednesday. There's the seven day forecast. Windy with very dry air. Let's hope we don't see any more grass fires or any kind of fires out there because they would spread quickly. And look at those temperatures, near 80 for a high Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Battle of flowers around 9 a.m. Friday morning. Get this, about 44 degrees. Hard to believe we could actually have a little chill in the air for the battle of flowers. It's just mind blowing, but this cold front's gonna make its impact known for the rest of the week. This is the last humid day. All right, let's uh, come back here to the stage and you're gonna notice some big differences and big changes here. For example, these props or statues. This is of uh, King Antonio, very different look and vibe out here. Also, we have some voices that you are going to recognize. These gentlemen, that are always part of the San Antonio Rodeo will be MC in this event, and you're gonna recognize their voices. Completely different show this year. We'll go over some more changes in just a bit, uh, coming up at six o'clock, and I finally got my medal. I'm gonna talk about that and my next giveaway at six. Ah, they finally arrived, huh? <laughs> He's very happy. A little excited. Yeah. All right. The spur. What you like the rodeo? Yeah, announcers I think that's out a there? great idea. Me the too. rodeo yeah. Fabulous. Perfect. I mean, can you stay on the float for eight seconds? Yes, that's really can. all it's about, right? <laughs> oh, some people can, and some people can. You know what I mean? All right. The magic number two. Yeah. Spurs have got it right now. That's a com combination of Spurs wins or Lakers losses for that tenth play-in position. When we come back, also with the assists, you got to give credit to Denver, who plays host to the Spurs tomorrow. But they get my little assist before that coming up. Spurs magic number is now down to two. Any combination of Spurs wins or Laker losses would ensure the 10th and final play in position to have a chance at the playoffs. But now the Pelicans' ninth position is also in sight with just four games left in the regular season. That's after the Spurs were able to beat the Blazers for the second time in three days at home, albeit a very bad first half, followed by a very good second half. Playing without both DeJounte Murray and Jakob Pertl, the Spurs struggled early after giving up 15 straight points. Lonnie Walker's three, part of a 12-0 run to push the Spurs out to a 26-23 lead after one. But in the second quarter, Ben Mack McLemore ended the first half on his own 8-0 run. The Spurs are down 56-48 at the break. In the second half, Keldon Johnson gets rolling. The three and the Spurs lead is up to 10 going into the four. Johnson spots up for another three. He had six three-pointers in all and a game by 28 points. Spurs outscored the Blazers 65-36 in the second half. They win it 113-92.
We were playing terrible uh, offensively and defensively, and um, we know we had to pick it up, honestly. And um, that was that was the key. You know, we know we wanted to win. Uh, we know we're playing for, so uh, we feel like uh, we, we had to bring that intensity or, you know, it was going to drop a game that, that we need there and that we should win. Luckily, we woke up at halftime and came out in the second half and did a good job defensively, board-wise, took care of the ball and ended up with the win. So uh, that's, that's the good part. All right, next up, Denver tomorrow night to start the Final Four. Before hosting the Spurs tomorrow, the Denver Nuggets did the Spurs a favor by beating Los Angeles Lakers to put some distance between the Spurs and L.A. for the 10th and final play-in position. The Spurs could use the help considering their Final Four is a tough schedule that includes the Nuggets, the Timberwolves, the Warriors, and the Mavs. Nikola Jokic led the Nuggets with 38 points and 18 rebounds. And once again, the Lakers were without LeBron James due to a shaky ankle in the 129-118 loss. Thanks to the Los Angeles Clippers' wire-to-wire win over the New Orleans Pelicans last Last night, the ninth playing position is now in play for the Spurs. That's after the Clippers clinched the eighth position of the Western Conference following their 119-100 victory. It still means the Clippers will still have to face a play-in tournament against a seven-seeded team, but a lot closer to the postseason. Marcus Morris led all scores with 22 points. So let's take a look at the most important part of the Western Conference standings and involves a nine and ten position. Right now, New Orleans is only a game up on the Spurs, the final four to play, and the Spurs have now put some distance between them and the Lakers, now two games up on the Lakers. So it's coming down to the wire, which is what the NBA wants. That's why they have the play in <laughs> You got it. You yeah. got it. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6.